coming in. Hey, Rob. Coming at you. Coming at you. You know, Rob, uh, you know, I said, why can't we just do this? Because, you know, normally, why do we have to be uh, in a public space to, you know, just hang out? You know, and I just said, like, I think, why do anything unless it's on social media, really? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel the same way. I don't, uh, I don't have any thoughts that don't go down into social media um uh you know we're open re- books. It's yeah, I mean, we're, we're an open book i mean i only had kids because i knew that that would help uh with content yeah. honestly you know just sort of like getting them in the kitchen getting them to do funny fails i mean my what? kids want to give like people magazine the uh rights to the birth announcement exactly i mean that's why i did uh, name my kids, both kids, after the two lead characters in Titanic, because I also thought that was fun too. To keep tie it into pop culture like that. That was super smart. That was super <laughs> smart. Um, I should not how... have my kids, uh, kid one and kid two. <laughs> well, but you know what? At the same time, uh, I think that <laughs> I think that that also allows people to put their own thing on. I just change my name to Man. You know. Just and then just that's it. You, you just put, whatever you want me to be, I will be. Fil- filming, filming. <laughs> Do you remember like back when you started? I don't know if you had this as much as I did, but the idea like when you would get a part but it didn't have a name. And did you ever like try to like? Did you ever have like a part where you'd be like, "Oh, I'm playing a man," or "I'm playing like customer at store." <laughs> like I remember like always being very upset about that because on your IMDb it would just be like coffee drinker, and you're like, "Oh, son of a bitch." I wanted to be, I wanted to like be known for my great role. Like I am uh, J. Jordan Jessup, even though I had one line getting a cup of coffee. Right. I would, um, I had, uh, I, I, would, I, I, was an, I was an extra in Law and Order. Okay. First year out of college and, and, um, and I just played, I didn't play anybody. I was a guy Right in, a, in the court, and then they handed me a camera, and I was like, oh, "I'm a, I'm an investigative journalist." <laughs> I had this whole bio going, and then it's funny, like when I was writing Children's Hospital, we would just write, you know, man or exactly or, or something like that, and then the actors, they usually the ones that would have one line, right? Yeah, they would um, request the name. Because it looks better. It's exactly what we're talking about. They need it for their resume. <laughs> and it's because it was like always embarrassing to be like, you want to show that you've done something uh, and you just didn't want to have a bunch of like, just, yeah, just that like person in red shirt. Yeah. Reporter for SU. The worst experience I ever had like in New York doing a commercial was I, um, I got a call the night before and they're like, Paul. I go, yeah. And they're like, you got the commercial. And I was like, oh, what commercial? Like, the one you auditioned for. And I was like, oh, yeah. And I, I get an audition for a commercial in like weeks. But I was like, wow. okay, and they're, they're like, where, where do I go? And they're like, oh, oh wow. I just like, I just got called in to be like background in a commercial. But I got there, I was like, I called like, I called everybody like, I got a part in a commercial. It's going to be great. And I said, sat in this room and I was like, oh, I think I'm not supposed to be in this room because I got the commercial. Like, no, 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 you're supposed to be here. You got, you got it. You're, you're supposed to be here. And, uh, right, you should introduce yourself to the director too. They like that. And it was the most upsetting commercial because they first put me next to this guy. It was like for like Honey Bunches of Oats, like that, 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 uh, that commercial. And it was like a support group for people who were addicted to Honey Bunches of Oats. And so they, <laughs> they put me next to the lead guy and he's like i'm addicted to honey bunches of votes and uh and he goes well, you know my name is darren and we're like hi darren and we do it one take and somebody comes over and they're like oh you know he, he can't move his mouth on camera because he's a uh, uh he's background so he can't and that commercial is the back of my head as they're shooting through me to get to the lead guy it was oh, so upsetting that just reminded me you know we have something odd in common you know not we're we're both it's we're both uh you know came up through the ucb and everything yeah. but like we were on do you ever get 
recognized from their TV show. They had a sketch show for what three seasons? Yes, yes. Yeah. Saigon Suicide Squad. Um, it was it was crazy because they did this live show, and then one of the episodes was basically the live show on stage. But they had 25, so they would just place yeah. the same 25 people in different parts of the theater. And it was always, me and you were always right near each other. And I think that's when we met, to tell you the truth. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I knew you. I knew of you. You were, you were like a class above me at UCB. But, but, uh, after yeah. hour. And like, and the UCB, it was a, it was an interesting time because it was like a, on that level of show, like there wasn't that much like food around or anything, so you just like were scavenging for like a banana after like six hours of waiting yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no. People always post those screenshots of, of everybody because if you look at those screenshots from that episode, it is you know yeah. it's Riggle, it's you, it's Helms, it's it's so many many people. And, and people are like, like, hey, Paul Schiller and Rob Corddry were in this. Or when we came up here and we were like told to show up as like extra credit for our yeah. class. Um, you like, but also I think the funny thing is, is to some people we often get confused as oh, yeah. each other, uh, which kind of we do in this new uh, documentary that we are both in. Uh, have, have a nice trip. Uh, this like right. doc documentary about uh, psychedelics, which by the way. When did we shoot this? I forgot that I shot this stuff. <laughs> no memory. No I memory. look at it. I'm like, this is easily a decade old. But like, I don't, I don't remember a thing. They said, oh, yeah, you played, you played Paul Shear's trip. And I was like, okay. Like, I, I don't remember like, doing that. I, like, it's, it, uh, <laughs> like, I don't, I remember one day that you and I passed each other and like you'll be Rob and and I remember I had to be shirtless and I was like oh I was like just nervous about taking off my shirt and I was like all right I'll be <laughs> shirtless in this thing. Uh, the answer um, is no. The answer is no. <laughs> no one wants to see me shirtless. Unless... Um, but yeah, it's so funny that this doc they've been working on it forever. It's, I'm sorry I got the name wrong. It was have a good trip. Right. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, I'm, and it's actually it turned out really, really super funny. It's like yeah, Sting. By the way, Sting is the lead of the documentary. What? I got to yeah. see it. It just released today, right? <laughs> yeah, it came out on Netflix today, and the Ad Rock is in it, and Kroll's in it. Kroll actually told a story about my bachelor party where everyone took mushrooms. Right. And, and Kroll decided he wanted to get covered in kelp because it was, like, like <laughs> warm to him, like a, like a sweater. And so, like... <laughs> He was just sitting in a chair, and we just started covering up more and more in kelp until he was completely covered. And we put like a feather in his hat, so he was just like this kelp monster, just riddled with like bug bites all over, like the sea bugs. Just so you know, I don't like stories about your bachelor party. Hey, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, look, I'm sure you know you were in New York. I was here. It's very different. You know, was uh, uh yeah, I couldn't go. I couldn't go. <laughs> and he wouldn't let me. My, my wife wouldn't let me. She was like, nope. No uh, more psychedelics I, for you. You're married. No, she didn't. I, I, uh, well, I mean, what's your role? Like, I mean, not that we have to talk about drugs, but like, uh, is we, that something but, that like, <laughs> what, that I've had the best experiences on? Like that I've kind of never, thing. ever had a bad time uh, on psychedelics. Never. I I feel like I was always so worried about them. And the first time I was able to actually do it, we talk about this in the doc, was in Amsterdam. Because I felt like, oh, it's it's safe here. This is like part of the culture. So it's all, all, it's all good. That was and the man, actual, was, in Amsterdam was one of the only times, like, because there's always those, that moment when you're, you're, you're going, you're starting to go on the trip and you're like, oh. <laughs> and then, and then you're like, then you're fine. But um, I, I remember when we, was in, we were in Amsterdam, and it was Sandy's first time um, yeah. doing rooms. And, and I remember it was started raining, and we went, got under an awning. And uh, then this woman with a lot of makeup on, 
came under the awning too. And it was really intense. And she, and the woman, she was right, right here, this close to us. <laughs> so that was the only time I think maybe I had a, that was like the worst time I had on troops. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I remember like going to Bonnaroo and Aziz tells a story in one of his stand-up specials, but we were there together. So I feel like uh, uh, it's a fair story to tell. We were, we were enjoying, like we were walking around we're like, oh, this Bonnaroo is kind of weird, like whatever. And you saw these like, whoa, electric forest. And like spent like four hours there. Like, oh, Bonnaroo made sense. Like we, we saw Bonnaroo like work. <laughs> like I, it was like. I spent so much time in college, like hating my campus and yet taking acid and then walking around my campus like, oh, I've missed everything here. <laughs> there is a world of magic, a world of ma magic all around me that I'm always missing. I was like, I've never really tasted a lollipop before. <laughs> why, why am I not eating a lollipop? I remember We're I did. This is good green, bad brown. I also like, I, I fancied myself. I mean, I was into Hunter S. Thompson the first time. I did sure. it, I think, as every, everyone was, right? Yeah, sure. And just, just journaling, frantically journaling, like, like I was Hunter S. Thompson. Like, and it's just garbage, wonderful garbage. Hey, Paul. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, I want to ask you about your Marvel show because yeah. Sam. Our, our publicist just texted me and said, if you can find a way to ask Paul about his, his Marvel show, <laughs> please do. And I thought that was probably the, um, the best That's a great way, way and, to and ask you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I'm glad that you asked me about it because actually you would uh, be perfect for it. It's, um, do it. so basically yes, what yes. We're, <laughs> we're doing this Marvel books and we're just, just talking about like cool books for people to check out and read. So like David Lindelof came on and talked about this book uh, called Marvel Man or Miracle Man, mm. uh, which was written by the same guy who wrote The Watchman, who doesn't have a name anymore. He's changed his name to, I think, the true creator. Uh, no. Yes. Or oh. the first creator. Um, but it's like this really cool, like old book in the Marvel world that I don't think many people have kind of tapped into. And, I think like people always feel like overwhelmed by comics. I know you and I will often like kind of uh, yeah. talk about like, yeah, what, what are you reading and stuff like that. And so it's yeah. been really fun to kind of talk, talk to people about what they like. Like Gillian Jacobs brought in Power Pack, which I never read, which is oh, about wow. kids, but their parents are just normal. Hmm. It sounds like, oh, their parents are normal. It sounds a little bit like the Runaways, like a. Yes, like a, it has yeah. very similar to that. Yeah. That's fine. Oh, that's yeah, cool, so that's man. Been, it's been fun. What have you been up to in the quarantine? Because I've been shooting that in my house. Like, oh, it's your show. That's, oh, yeah. You, that's pretty great. great. That I like how people are finding new, new ways and, you know, the only yeah. way to, uh, to, to shoot stuff these days. But, like, I've, uh, I haven't been doing a hell of a lot, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying not to like mourn that like i'm trying not to be like oh, you should be writing you did it because i'm not gonna sit here and just force it and make myself feel worse for something to fill my day with I, and the time i'm watching uh this shit, i would just literally turn it off before dispatches from elsewhere you might have given me that, that recommendation I oh yes I, I i love that that's great oh. So great. It's so great. And it's such a cool show. It's so like, um, I don't know, inspiring in a way, like for, especially for it. Cause I love um, interactive theater and, and yes. sleep no more and that kind of thing. Are you doing the interactive theater that's on Instagram right now? And uh, if you follow this uh, account called Jade is in town, Jade is in town every day she is posting something, you have to decode it, and then you are communicating with her over DM, and you're helping her solve this mystery, and so far, uh, 
we found that she's like uh, being haunted by this killer and uh, and it's progressing. So today will be the first day back. Uh, but I it's, jump in? Oh, you could just jump in any each day and they'll kind of, um, they'll walk you back. Like you can, she kind of walks you back through oh, cool. it. Like to tell you, oh, yesterday we found out this. And then group, uh, that won all these awards that do it in, uh, there's a place in New Orleans uh, for the, they did this horror festival and they, the whole weekend is interactive theater, mini versions of interactive theater the whole weekend. It's oh so my much God. fun. It's the best. Oh you just go God. from thing to event, yeah, event to event to event, and there's one major one that like last year culminated in, in this fight between like witches and vampires in the middle of the street. Oh my God, that's it amazing. That's like so kind fun. of like this show. It's like, yeah. it seems like it's out of the scope of reality, the, a, a real version of you know a game like this or a interactive theater but it's so inspiring yeah uh, i feel like honestly it's like we don't need to put the pressure on ourselves to be like for me i'm trying mean, look if i'm I, i'm home i have two kids you have two kids it's like you there's a certain uh, like parent obligation that's going on that you just can't ignore right are you teaching are you homeschooling at all well, no, they, because there's the school is homeschooling. Oh, so you don't have to be. Oh, yeah, because you have older kids. Like I have to be like yeah. off to the side of the computer, kind of like putting a new sheet of paper down, oh. and pulling it away. Yeah, man, uh, boy, Sandy and I like, not to like lord it over you, but we high five a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like um, somebody God, had kids when we did. They're at thirteen and eleven, and they're like. They're practically in college, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Remember me from Dukes of Hazard and uh, uh, Saturday Night Live. Uh, oh. But, you know, people brought up that we were in Blackball together. That's, like, one of my earliest memories of oh, us, yeah. like, really working together. Like, we did this movie, an right. improvised movie uh, about paintball that we yeah. shot on the weekends. Um, were you on The Daily Show at that point? I was, yeah. So I was working on The Daily Show during the week and shooting that on weekends, and it was a shit show. Oh, yeah. We were uh, just living in, yeah. like, 16 passenger vans and, and waiting to shoot in between, like, torrential deaths. <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, and uh, it was fun, though. I mean, looking back, it was a good memory. And I remember something, though, that you may not remember, because... They would always get us to shoot these paintballs at each other. And paintball, I mean, yes, I know it's not that big of a deal, whatever. But you got like a hit that like cut open your scalp. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? that. Yeah. Yes. And it was like such a intense, like those things were, I never had been more afraid than when you're behind a wall and everyone knows you're there. And it's like, bra, 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 and there's like paint is just exploding all over you. Like, well, where do you go? What do you do? You like they were, they were, they wanted to run us through the paces. Yeah, they, <laughs> they were full on. Yeah, anything that touches my head, it, it seems like just splits it open. You know? I mean, I'm always bumping my head, and I feel like it's as a bald man. I mean, we're both bald men. That when you, it just is. It, you look. It's just more apparent. Like when you have hair, you can kind of hide. Hide it, but you get a big bump on your head. Hair's like um, acts acts as a shield. As yes, a, you know, people don't, don't know that you don't have. I'm I'm constantly moving through life like this. You know, whether it's from the sun or low hanging uh, shelves or what. But they don't look very good in hats. Oh, you look, okay? You look great, guys. There we go. <laughs> you look great, but man. no, I, I I like I like a ball cap. But yeah, no, it's. But if you're not wearing a ball cap, you got to protect that head. You got to get uh, you got to get stuff on that head. Or or just get skin cancer. You know, we're all Let's gonna just embrace it. it. Come on, man. I mean, we may as well just get it. Get leathery. That's my that's my slogan in life. Get leathery. I think it's a good slogan. And I like it. You know, Rob. Uh, we also live nearby each other here in town. Yeah, um, I throw a rock and hit your house, probably. Yeah, which and, and apparently you have been doing that. 
been really they're scaring not, my children. I wouldn't call them rocks, though. They're, they're not going to damage anything. Have you been, like, uh, enjoying any, like, the, the local, like, food? Like, I know a lot of people, like, we're supposed to be supporting our local restaurants and stuff right. like that. Is, do you have, like, a, like, because I feel like I've been eating home. It's day 60 now for me. We've been in our house for 60 days. Like, what has been your go-to, like, relief food? Do you have any? Oh, well, uh, so, uh, it, it, it's not delivery. Um, we, we do, we get delivery usually on the weekends because we like to cook. Sandy does most yeah. of the cooking um and she's she's like it, the, the kitchen is her laboratory now we've had the best meals and i make i i make the best bagel pizzas that you're ever gonna what, taste put your what is this down. recipe okay uh, I don't, i'm not gonna i'll give you the, the nutshell version yeah, yeah i'll give you the highlights with the bagel you have to toast it first and Got then it. You put olive oil on the bagel with some garlic powder. Or oh, garlic I like sauce, this. This is smart. Right? Okay. Then yeah. Don't put too, too much sauce. You know? What kind of sauce? Are you getting sauce right out of the, the jar? Right out of the right out of the jar. I don't even care. All right. Yeah. All right, I love it. I'll put any kind of sauce on, on it if you whatever you got. Do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite? I mean, let's plug some sauces. Well look, I'm a big um I'm an elitist, so I like Rayos. You know, oh, I'm mean, the best. I can't get Hollywood it because celebrity. of the quarantine. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, we always have an abundance of Rayos here. And then um, a lot of cheese. And, and oh, okay. Get, forgo the mozzarella for this kind of pizza. Or this is smart. Put mozzarella on, but put the cheddar on because cheddar is better when it is broiled. I would never have pictured cheddar on a pizza. I mean, who would? Uh, who would? That's the that's the tips that people are tuning in to uh, this. You know, this is us just sharing show. recipes. <laughs> but before, I've been making before it hit yeah. the last part of it. Before I'm very excited about this. Before you put it in the broiler, you've got to drizzle it with the cheese with a little bit more olive oil and so Italian really seasoning. All right, this is actually you've made me want to get a bagel pizza because I feel like the promise of a bagel. Because you got to, like, the toasting first takes care yeah. of the potential uncooked sogginess yes. of the bagel. Because you can, you got to think pizza. You're, you know, the pizza is thin. and you Are you doing I, it in a small I, oven? Yeah. What? Are you doing it in a small oven or are you doing it in your regular oven? I'm doing it in the big oven, man. And I'm letting Wait, that thing it. broil. I'm letting that thing heat up for 20 minutes. Okay. I like this. Whole production. Olive oil, garlic salt, sauce. Italian yeah, we're dropping on Italian cheddar. seasoning cheddar. This and then the way to go. make it your own. Well, I mean, at this point, if somebody says a dash of cumin. Would you put a little, a little cumin in there? No, don't. Well, I, eh, listen, I don't know. Side of the of the pizza envelope. I uh, I've been making really elaborate cocktails. Uh, that that's been fun for me all the time, I, every morning. Every morning, I get the kids I get the kids drinking right away. Yeah, uh, you know, I make them Dole whips, just a little bit of rum because rum is a natural liquor that kids can have. I mean, that's no, that's no, 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 yeah, people don't know that. That's you know, that's, only that's organic. Yeah. Only the only <laughs> the Europeans have tapped into that. It is because like, you're trying to just find stuff to do because it's also like you do have the time. Like every time, like you like it's like you can go run and do all the mixes and everything like that and i feel really accomplished and, and it's fun and too it. yeah it's fun nice. like I, I i even kind of uh i start moving faster and more efficiently you know i'm like it's like i'm in a cooking show now so i i mean because like it, it, like I, by the way i was in a cooking show it was the most daunting thing i've ever been on in my oh, life really? I, was, I, was on, I was on nailed it oh uh, tell me about this uh it, what is it What's Nailed, Nailed it? it? Nailed It is a show with Nicole Byer. It's on Netflix as well as uh, the doc that we did. And uh, basically, it's terrible chefs with hard challenges. That's so, so great. I was like, oh, I could do this show. Like, I can't, like, put Fonda on. Do this. I was like, bring me on the show. So they were like, do you want to be a contestant? 
or do you want to be a, a judge? And I was like, no, put me in, put me in the mix with the people. And it's never, I've never felt more pressure in my life and also more pride because like the clock is just ticking down. You, there's no time out. I cut my finger in the middle of it and they had to come over and like sew it up. I was like joking around. I was doing a bit and then I sliced my finger. Oh, but like, man. but the, the clock is still going. Nothing stopped. And it's such, you know, it's a real show. It's real stakes. There's real competition. So legally they have to keep everything on the up and up. Wow. There's so few things in life. And I think like cooking and making drinks and all this sort of stuff is a little bit of that. Like, oh, you did it. You, you started with nothing. You made something, whether it's delicious or just like, okay, yeah. you still did it. And it's also for other people to enjoy usually. And that's, and you don't know whether it's going to be good until you hear back from them. Yes. It's really, usually, uh, 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 surpasses my expectations of their reaction, which is good. I think there's something about that home cooking thing that just puts it over the edge. Like, I think that if we got what we made in a restaurant, you'd probably be a little bit more critical, but you see somebody in there, they're doing it up. There's a little, little love in there. Do you, do you think like, uh, what have you been doing? What have you, have you learned a new skill or anything? Have you like, I, I haven't learned a I wouldn't have done like my skill that I've really learned uh, is how to organize and fold all my laundry in the house. I haven't really done that for that long. Like I'm doing a lot of laundry. I'm cleaning a lot of toilets. Oh, yeah. I have a whole system to kind of get the floors clean. Like I'm doing, I have a lot of skills in that level, but yeah, it's not like, like a lot of skills that you would do are outside of the. It's like, Oh, I want to take up doing, uh, oh, why am I forgetting? Uh, it's a calligraphy. It's a calligraphy yeah. And, uh, and I have all the stuff here and that's been like on the docket to kind of go back to, cause oh, I found that to be incredibly relaxing. Yeah. 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 I just bought a bo drawing book and, um, mm -hmm. I cracked it the other day and it's not as good as I thought it was going to be, but the drawing book, teaching, learning how to draw better from a book is never that good. I, I'm obsessed with master classes. I mean, not that you can like learn. I mean, I love master class. Like, I'll watch Steph Curry teach me how to play basketball. Uh, yes, I mean, between that, do you take pictures? I take a bunch of pictures. Like I have like a camera, like, like a real deal camera. Yeah, I do. I have a real deal camera. And I was planning on putting together an, a still life, like a real, Ooh. like I like a with a backdrop and and oh, reflective wow. light from the bottom and it was going to be a it sounds stupid now because we're so far into this but it was going to be like a very serious still life like corona still life like with toilet paper and lysol ah. and a mask and do it very, very like very artistically and i just i couldn't get it to get i, I got in my head about it <laughs> I guess I was but but it's absolutely so much <laughs> i think the one thing that this like i think the one thing that this corona quarantine whatever we're in some time i'll be able to do it and all those things are still on that level like on that shelf of oh if i have some time i'll do it right and the things that i've just like jumped into like eh, fuck it i'll do that uh you know and that has actually been way more freeing. I feel like you're never going to have time for like, I need to really clear my schedule. And I, I've just kind of, the stuff I've jumped into has been the more fun things that I've been doing. You know, you're the kind of guy though, that I always think of, like you, you always seem to have time for everything. Like you're in two different shows at live shows at once in LA. Yeah. Uh, you're working the next day. You're, but you're also, Guy, I go to for pop culture information. Well, you're not. I, well, you're not. I say it, I. I don't know why that is. I, I sometimes kick myself for doing it that much, but I feel like there's a. I do love no, working with other people. You can't I, well, I, stop. Well, I, I just, I just want to like. I do feel like I love just getting to like kind of fuck around with people, and like, and and that's and that's what's so fun about. Uh, you know, uh, what's been so fun about it is sort of like we're in a we're in a world. 
world where we get to work with so many different people. And I just like that opportunity. I like, I like doing a show with Rob Hubel at Largo and I like doing the podcast with Jason in June. And I never want to like focus on one thing and maybe that's, should talk to a therapist about it. But I do but like that idea of like keeping it fresh. Or maybe like you, like you just, when you wake up, you grab the day by the day. I'm going to take you. <laughs> I'm going to do whatever I want to you. And then you do. <laughs> then you make well, love to the day. Make I make love to the day. Uh, Rob, we have to wrap up, but I have a couple questions for you that I'm seeing here. Yes. Is there going to be a new season of Ballers somewhere? No. Else? Okay. Um, and uh, was it, what was it like working with Ben Stiller on the Heartbreak Kid? Oh, I thought for sure you were going to say The Rock. Uh, <laughs> ben Stiller, it was great. He was, um, you know, actually R.I.P. Jerry Stiller. We yeah, I know. Just heard Hilarious he funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ben's, you know, you, you know him. He's yeah. really good. He's great. He's very funny and very, what's surprising to me about how serious they are about, about yeah. it, you know? And, I, and it, it's always very inspiring. Like, oh, I don't have to be this, this doesn't, I don't have to treat this like it's- Right, you can privileged. respect the process, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I really, um, I admire that about him. Um, well, that's awesome. Reminding everybody right now, uh, you can see Rob and I actually playing each other, uh, playing on the fact that we get recognized as each other sometimes in this new Netflix documentary, Have a Good Trip, uh, which is available right now. It's kind of a, a fun documentary about psychedelics, but it's viewed through the lens of those old, like LSD danger ads hosted by Nick Offerman. Sting is in it, Ad Rock, Nick Kroll. Insane, insane cast. Ben Stiller also in the, in the thing and, and, uh, and uh, Rosie Perez. It's an awesome, awesome thing. It's on Netflix. And so there you go. 